Hey, it's is Hugh Ballou. Welcome to this episode of Orchestrating Success. And I got a guy today that I'm going to interview that knows how to convert passion to profit. Uh, Todd, tell us a little bit about you. And tell us, how do you say your last name? Tresseter. Tresseter. Okay, I, I have a southern, southern focus on pronunciations. I want to make sure I got it right. So, Todd, um, I've read a little bit about you, and I'm really impressed. And we're talking about how to get more clients than you really need today. And so talk about your background and what brought you to being able to do this for yourself and for others. Yeah, so my background's hedge fund investing. That's where I learned uh, the investment skills that ultimately I market through my coaching services and books and courses and things like that. So that's where I learned it, you know, practical school, hard knocks. I spent about 12 years doing research in computerized trading algorithms and risk management systems, things like that. Um, ran the fund for all those years. We had only one losing year for the investors. The portfolio actually won money, but um, even in that losing year, but it was such a small win that net of expenses and fees, the investors lost a little bit. Other than that, we had 100% winning years. Um, I went on to build this financial education company. I sold the hedge fund uh, back when I was 35, which anybody looking at this feed can see that that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, and so I've been building out a financial education business, uh, just trying to get back the knowledge that I created. It's different. My viewpoints are sometimes unorthodox, but they're always supported by math and research and proof. Um, but they violate a lot of commonly held uh, ideas in the financial planning arena. Love it. I like to violate all the standard leadership rules because yeah, they don't, make, they don't make work. Make hamburger out of sacred cows. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. One of the people I interviewed was Gary Gunderson who actually wrote the book killing sacred cows. Um, yeah. so, um, who for your business, who's your ideal client? Well, it depends on what part of the business you're talking about. Right. So there's, there's various parts of the business. There's, you know, the online advertising, there's the books, there's the courses and there's the coaching services. I think what you're referring to is the coaching services. Um, I did, you know, when you look at ideal target client, there's several. And the reason for that is that there's several problems that the coaching service solves. One of the keys in getting more clients than you can handle is that you've got to be really clear on what problem you solve. People pay for solutions problems. And so you've got to look at what is the high value solution you have that other people will gladly pay for. And that's your starting point. So it's not so much like, oh, it's uh, women over 35 with a net worth of blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work that way. It's, it's a psychographic. It's not a demographic. Ex say a little more about that. That's fascinating. So you, um, what problem do you solve? Let's, let's go after it that way. One of the problems that I solve is people who achieve, they're very near financial independence. And a lot of people don't understand this, but as you approach financial independence, it's very um, uh, unleveling experience, if you will. It totally takes people by surprise. And the reason for that is as you approach financial independence, what happens is, you know, your life up to that point was fairly well prescribed. It's pretty standard stuff, right? You go to work five days a week, you've got You've got your job, your focus is making more money, your focus is spending less, saving money, trying to achieve some modicum of financial security. Everything's pretty well set. Once you achieve financial independence, all that grounding is removed because you no longer have to report to the man. You no longer have a daily routine that's required of you. Everything is up to you. You can choose and you no longer have any excuses for your unhappiness. Like before, when you're unhappy, you could always blame it on your crappy boss or your lousy job or, you know, the fact that you're at work all day when you really want to be doing X or Y. And once you're financially independent, you got no excuses. Um, your happiness is entirely up to you. Your day is entirely up to you. You create it. And that, that is what I'll call a burden of responsibility. And most people, you know, sitting on the other side of this will be like, yeah, Todd, gee, big burden. I'll take it any day. Um, and it's true, right? Most people, it's a privilege to get to that position in life, but don't kid yourself. It's very disconcerting. And so when people experience it, they're, um, thrown off and they seek out guidance. And I'm one of the only people that has been through it and is willing to mentor people on. I've been through it a lot with both myself and clients. So that's one target profile client. It's a very, they have a lot of money. 
They're very concerned. They're right at the edge of financial independence. They don't really know if they're financially independent or not. They're just not sure. The numbers are marginal. And right when you hit that point, your whole life changes. Like before that, everything was pre-prescribed. After that, you're, you're going according to what your values are. So all kinds of stuff that you could tolerate before, like going to work and uh, putting up with people's crap and all kinds of things like that, you won't tolerate it anymore. And it's very, it's very unsettling. Um, it's, a, it's a huge change in a person's life. So that's one target client. Another target client is somebody who just wants to build wealth. Um, so for example, an entrepreneur would have success, but he's not converting it into wealth, right? He's building a successful business. It's not translating over into wealth into his personal balance sheet. He's not sure what he's doing wrong. He needs help. Um, that's another target client where I help him solve the problem. So there's a variety of target clients. Well, and um, those are the people listening to this podcast. And that's, that's how we position ourselves. There are a whole lot of people, um, 31 years working with solopreneurs and early stage business, small businesses, people are stuck and they're on a treadmill and they're too busy. They don't have a life because they haven't done this kind of planning and this kind of reframing. Well, so let's go back to the expertise. Yeah, most people I say are too busy, too busy making a living to, to develop wealth. You know? Absolutely. They're sometimes too busy trying to make a living to make a living. <laughs> to live. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, to the bottom line. So we're talking about how to, how to have more clients than you can handle. And um, I'm at a place in my career where I just, like you are, I screen clients and I don't want to work with everybody. And I only take a certain number and I try to automate, automate the others um, put, or put them into groups. So what are the problems? Um, I'm in a service business. A lot of people I work with are in a service business. It's, we're sort of selling what might be called invisible uh, at some point. Leadership is invisible until you're bad at it. Uh, financial planning is invisible until you're bad at it. Um, so service business. Yeah, I, ca I, call it, I call it selling pink fog. Pink fog. I love it. So what's, what are some of the problems um, in, in approaching marketing for this kind of business? Well, first of all, as I said, you have, to, you have to be clear on what problem you solve that people will pay for. A lot of people have a lot of problems. So for example, early on in the business, I used to help people get out of debt. I don't do that anymore, right? But that's a problem people won't pay for a solution for. They don't have the money. Mm -hmm. um, and so they may really need help. They have a huge problem, um, but they don't have money and they can't really pay for a solution. You've got to find problems that you are the single best solution to that people will gladly pay for that solution for. And then you have to position yourself in their buying process. You have to understand where they look and what they're looking for in order to solve that problem. And it's got to be a burning enough problem. They wake up with it in the morning. It bothers them. They're, they clearly care about it enough to do some search on it or whatever. So as an example, and those, those I call money keywords. Okay. You're looking for those money keywords or, or finding a buying process. They have, it might not even have to do with the internet. The buying process might exist somewhere else, but you have to identify their buying process and then you have to map yourself right into that buying process. You have to show up at the point they're looking for that solution. So as an example on my site, um, you know, if you look up terms like money coach, financial coach, investment coach, coaching, all those terms with coaching, most financial terms related to coaching all rank pretty highly. So the way a buying process works for a coaching service is people will look for those money terms like money coach, Coach or financial coach or financial coaching. And <clears throat> it's a trust relationship. So the buying process is you don't have to be number one. It's not like, say, a retirement calculator where somebody comes in, they'll use the top result, they got their answer, they're out. You know, with coaching, it's a personal service, it's a trusted relationship. And so a person will typically go for, through the first couple pages of results, certainly at least the first page, excuse me. <clears throat> and they're going to try to find somebody that they resonate with. They're trying to find somebody they can trust, somebody that they can connect with, somebody whose message they, they resonate with. And so they'll go through those first couple pages of coaches in search of a coach, somebody that it's a financial coach. And if you're looking for a financial coach, you have a financial problem you're trying to solve. You're looking for help and you don't want a traditional financial advisor. Otherwise you wouldn't search those terms. And so the site then has to position itself as a trusted authority in that field to where they feel compelled to connect with you. You also want to write your message in a way that it's unique and stands for what you provide and only you can provide. So for example, my message connects a lot of um, 
personal growth issues with wealth building. In other words, the way I like to say it is that building wealth is the ultimate path to personal growth because of everything you have to go through in order to get there. And that the real gold is in who you become on the journey, not the, not the end destination itself. So that's, you know, that's a very different positioning statement, but it's true. I mean, it's been true in my life. It's been true in my client's life. It's not some cutesy little thing. It's what I truly believe. And so, you know, you, but that's unique in my message. Everybody else is about the money. I mean, all these other guys, they'll position themselves next to a Lamborghini or a fancy mansion or some other cheesy little thing. I'm sitting by a stream and I'm talking about that life is about experiences, not stuff. You know, nobody wants more money. They want what they think money will get them. And for the most part, people don't want more stuff. They want a more fulfilling life. And, they, and people connect with that. Like my target client does, right? And that's the point. Your message won't relate to everybody, but it'll relate to your target client. And that's who you want to attract. And, and it'll stand out from the crowd. So if you go through the first couple pages of search results for things like money coach, financial coaching, and you know all those different terms, and look at those, I'm clearly a trusted authority in the field. That's why I rank. And, that's, and so people then contact you. <clears throat> right? Because that's the buying process for a coach is nearly every coach gives away a free strategy session. And that's where you get to know the client. You know, you talk over stuff with them. And so all you have to do, the whole purpose of that content marketing is to get you to the strategy session. And the strategy session is where the close takes place. And so, you know, again, it's just positioning yourself in the buying process and you have to have enough flow of clients in that buying process to have a full practice or to have a full business. So in my case, back when I did this, and it's grown since then, I don't even know what the numbers are now, but there was something like uh, 25,000 searches for Money Coach, if I'm recalling right. And so you apply the 1% rule to it, right, on the internet. And so you say 25,000 searches, 1% of those click through, that's two, uh, what is that, 250. Yeah. And then 1% of that is 2.5 clients, right? That will actually like contact you and possibly convert. That's 2.5 clients. And then, but that's only one term, right? There's a whole bunch of these terms that I would rank for. So if you take 2.5 clients just for the one term and you say, okay, my average retention on a client is two years, that would mean that you could carry a constant practice of roughly 50 people, which is way more than I could ever fulfill, right? And so, just that one strategy alone right there more than filled my practice. Hmm. Hmm. So speak more. And I'm, I'm, I bet there's well, one, one other thing we want to go through here. There's one more step in the process. I just want to make sure we get in before we move. Absolutely. And that is the actual conversion process, right? Cause it's traffic times conversion equals profit. That's the formula, right? Traffic, and so traffic, traffic times conversion equals profit. Really good formula. Thank you. Yeah, very straightforward, right? That's, that's the way the business works, right? And so, so far I've been showing the traffic and I've been showing the first step to conversion, but the actual conversion to a coaching relationship, again, it's a trusted relationship and you, you, it's gonna be different for your business. You have to relate what I'm saying to your business and the key is understanding the buying process of a client. I'm relating the buying process of a coaching client to illustrate the point. You're gonna have to figure out the buying process for your client. So in my case, they all get a free strategy session. So you've got two conversions that have to take place. You first have to convert them from cold traffic to somebody who wants a strategy session. And then you have to convert the strategy session to a paying client. And so in the strategy session, I had a whole system set up where the person would have to pre-qualify themselves. And the pre-qualification is genuine, but yet it also creates a bit of exclusivity. Um, because what I found in doing coaching was that it's really a selection process. It's not a marketing or sales process. In other words, for the right client, coaching was a no-brainer thing. It would definitely put more money in their pocket than it cost them. And the key is just find out who the right client was. So I gave, I gave away an article that everybody had to pre-read to qualify themselves and they had to say where they fit into the process when they applied for a strategy session. And so they'd have to read the article in order to even tell me where they fit in as a target client who's going to get more value than they paid for. And so in that essay, if you will, or in that article, it would go through and explain everybody shouldn't do coaching. They should instead learn, their, learn the stuff over here and over here because it has a higher value relative to their need, mm -hmm. right? It's a more efficient way to get the information that coaching is properly used in a very specific way for a very specific client and either they qualify or they don't. And, and so I, I just laid it out right up front, right? Those are the clients that are going to be great clients for me. And so then they would write in and they would say, yes, I qualified under blah, 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 blah. And they like pre-qualify themselves. And then, so 
that sorts out the strategy sessions. So very high percentage of the strategy sessions would close. It'd be like, I don't know, 70, 80% of the strategy sessions would actually result in a paying client. Wow. That's a huge yeah, it's, Well, what it is, it's a pre-qualification system that keeps me from wasting my time on the phone, right? It sorts people. But the key to that is the top of your funnel, right? We're explaining a funnel here. The top of the funnel has to be large enough that you can afford to be picky like that, right? You have to get that traffic coming in and then you have to have the conversion process that sorts. So by the time they come to me, they're basically pre-sold. They've read my material. Like most coaching clients, when they would come to me, they'd say, oh, Todd, I listen to all your podcasts. I had one guy told me he and his wife listened to each one of my podcasts three times before they called me. Three times, he and his wife. And this guy made $600,000 a year. I mean, his time is very, very valuable. And that's how much time he put in researching me. He researched my name, researched my business, read a bunch of my articles, and then contacted me. By the time he contacted me, he was pre-sold. And so that's the beauty. Once you go into the strategy session with this much pre-qual, the only thing you have to do is help them. You've, if, given if, us, you've given us a whole lot of data here, and it's, it's really a brilliant process. Um, so there's, there's a couple of places I want to go back and clarify, but I, I sound like I cut you off. You, this guy made $600,000 because he, he has the due diligence to do research before he jumps into something, like before he talked to you. Um, Bingo, very, very high quality clients. You're not dealing with you know, college kids kicking the tires and you know, people who can't pay your bills or wannabes. You're only paying for people that are serious. So your website is financialmentor.com and you've got one, two, three, four, five, at least five books. Um, how much money do I need to retire? You got, are those, uh, those can be found on financialmentor.com? Yeah, and also on Amazon. You can look up my name on Amazon and and, or, or look up Financial Mentor on Amazon or Todd Tressetter. Or go to my website, financialmentor.com. You'll see the books in the sidebar. Tressetter is T-R-E-S-I-D-D-E-R. Todd, you one, S, one S, two Ds. It's counterintuitive. S, people try to spell T-R-E-S, it. yes, uh-huh. I-D-D-E-R. Um, how long have you been doing this particular program? Well, I got Financial Mentor, the website, back in 1998 after I sold the hedge fund. Um, and I really didn't do anything with it. I made tons of mistakes, right? I just, it was a brochureware site. It was good enough back then because there wasn't much competition on the internet. Um, it was good enough back then to bring clients into the coaching practice. It was basically brochureware, um, had tons of mistakes in it. And then around, it was, as we went into the top of the real estate market, so about 2006, 2007, I got really uncomfortable. I was mainly focused on my real estate business back then. Um, and so I got, my real estate business with my personal ownership of a bunch of apartment buildings. And I got uncomfortable with the financial leverage involved in real estate um, as the credit bubble bloomed. And so I sold everything, finished selling by 2007, the final top. At, at that point, all I had left was just the house I live in. Um, and then uh, once the downturn had really developed in full force and I saw where the government was going with it. I really wasn't comfortable bringing financial leverage back in. I'm still not comfortable with it. I just think things are too unstable. And so um, I, I decided to pursue you know, time leverage, knowledge leverage, technology leverage through building out this business finally. And also along that time, I came introduced to WordPress around 2008, 2009. So long, to make a, a short story long, you, I got the URL back in uh, 1998 developed a junkie site that sat there for about 10 years, got hold of WordPress. And the site's been through about three evolutions since then to the form you see now. Um, and I've only really taken it seriously since about 2009 or so. Hmm. Hmm. So you spoke um, uh, early on in this interview about you're not looking at a demographic, you're looking at a psychographic. And there Correct. may be some people listening to this that aren't really familiar with that term. How do you sort out your psychographic and what does that mean? Well, let's use my course as an example right now because what I'm doing in the business right now, maybe we'll get to it, maybe not, is I'm moving from coaching services, which as you correctly alluded to, more than sold out. I mean, I couldn't even take new clients, right? And I've been sold out for years. If you go on my website now, you'll see I'm not accepting new clients. Um, I'm moving the whole business to putting Todd in a box through courses. Um, what happened is I coached for 10 years and so, or 15 years, more than that now, because I'm still coaching, just the old clients that are still with me. So I guess it's 20 years now I've been coaching. 
<laughs> I'm dating myself here. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've been coaching 20 years and what I learned is that it's a, what people go through to achieve financial freedom. So the big solution I provide is financial freedom, uh, like serious education for financial freedom, not, you know, get rich quick garbage or anything like that. It's like serious education. Like how do you engineer your life to develop financial freedom with reliability and security? So anyway, um, that's the solution I provide in, on the website. That's the, the, like the moniker is financial freedom for smart people. And so um, I'm moving everything to courses because what I learned through coaching over those years is my client slowly showed me that it's a step, it's a step-by-step map they follow and everybody comes to me at a different step in the process, but they all follow the same seven steps. And so I'm formulating seven steps to seven figures and all the cor- all the courses are actually already formulated. They're in drawers. I'm just making them manifest, if you will, by formally putting them in courses. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first one that's available now is step three. Um, now that was, that's how to design your life to, to result in wealth. It's like a wealth planning course, right? But it's totally different from traditional financial planning or investment planning. So anyway, we can go into that if you want. The point being, there's a psychographic for that course. Mm-hmm. And it took me a while to figure it out. I was very confused because at first I was like, oh, it's going to be, you know, people over 50 and, you know, they're trying to retire and this, that, and the other thing. I was wrong. I mean, I had, I had call people who are college kids that just coming out of school and they're just getting started in a career. I had stay at home moms. I had men who were 70 and already multimillionaires. I couldn't figure it out. It took me forever. I was interviewing my clients in the course, trying to figure out the commonality. It turned out it was really obvious and I, I didn't get it at first. It was anybody who's serious enough about their financial freedom to study the subject and do something about it. That was the common psychographic. It was people who were serious about it. They weren't just wannabes. They weren't like thinking it would be nice to have it. They were actively doing something about it. And that's why they were willing to pay some money for a course that gave them the complete soup to nuts solution. And so my target client is hanging out on other financial independence blogs, right? They're reading this stuff. They're reading all over the place. And then most of what you find on the subject is somewhat limited. It's mostly about extreme frugality and some of the other things about how you achieve financial independence at an early age. And so, you know, my, my target client is studying it and they say, I want more. And they run across my course and they buy it. Mm, mm, mm. Did, did that make sense to you, Hugh? It, it makes a huge amount of sense. And Todd, that's probably 3% of the population that's been able to figure that out for their own business. Yeah. And well, and again, I'm just following standard business practices, right? I mean, you know, when a course is new and, and the size of it, the size of the de- people coming in is small enough that you can have personal interaction, I'm having it. I'm, I'm calling them up. I'm getting on the phone with them. I'm talking about the course. I'm asking them how it's working for them. What are their interests? What are their dreams? Where did they come from? How did they find me? How did they buy the course? I'm just having interviews with these people. And they love it, right? Because nor- how often do you get to talk to the course creator? You know, who cares enough to do that? And you go in there and you start seeing it. I mean, they, they'll hand it to you if you just ask the right questions. So part of what you said later on, thank you for that. That's so helpful. It's so helpful. And um, you did a lot of trial and error, but um, we call those, I don't call them mistakes. I call them learning opportunities. Uh, well, yeah, you, the, the way I approach it is everything's figureoutable. You know, you just have to, you just have to apply good business practices and step forward and apply risk management at each step of the way. And eventually you'll get there. But I mean, I don't know how, I never knew courses when I started and the course came out great. I didn't know internet marketing when I started, came out great. Nobody was, I was the first financial coach on the internet when I started, didn't even exist as a business model. And I had this, I had this harebrained crazy idea that, that I wanted to separate financial advice and financial education from investment product sales. Because again, back in the 1990s, where'd you get your financial information? It was from a broker, right? which is an inherent conflict of interest. Now it doesn't sound so revolutionary, but again, it's 20 years later, you know? Yeah, I had a broker once. I kept getting broker and broker and broker. Um, yep. We won't go there. <laughs> um, so, so you figured out who needs you. Now, how do you bring in, you, you talk about getting the, the funnel, you know, here, here's the funnel. And you need enough people in the funnel to be able to sort out those numbers you were talking about. So how do you get people into that funnel? Well, that's what I was explaining earlier. I gave in a content marketing example where what you, I, I'm sorry, I didn't explain it in detail though. So if you go on my site, you'll see an entire area under financial coaching. And there's a, a library of articles in there that are all 
uh, connected into a silo of content. Back up from that. How do you get them to come there? How do you well, drive they, traffic there? I'm not driving traffic. They're searching for a solution and I'm becoming the authority in it. See, the key is you have to find out their buying process. It goes back to the beginning of the conversation. Mm -hmm. it, it's their buying process. It's not about me. See, this is the thing that almost everybody misses in marketing. Nobody gives a damn about you, right? All they care about is themselves and their problems and what solution you can provide. The only thing they want from you is the solution. And, you know, that may sound harsh, but is that real? I mean, you're laughing because it's real. No, you know, it's, I'm laughing because so few people have been able to figure that out. You know, here I am, and, and just be on social media, people just hit me all the time. Here I am, I'm great, buy my stuff. Well, wait a minute, we haven't had a conversation. I don't know you. And by the way, yeah, I, people, how do you know what I need? People think, yeah, people think it's all about building up. You know, you need to be authoritative, but you need to be authoritative in the way you give, right? Because when you're giving, you're giving to your customer. You, you got to come from the customer's viewpoint. What are they looking for? What is it that's going to convert them, Right they're going to convert when you give them so much value for free. The beauty of the internet and the beauty of content marketing is you can give unbelievable amounts of value for free and it still makes good business sense because you can deliver videos, you can deliver eBooks, audio downloads, podcasts, all these things. You can deliver unbelievable solutions at almost no cost to yourself, just the cost of time of producing the media. And if you can, when you do an authoritative body of work, Google will eventually figure it out. If you structure it properly, Google will see that you're an authority. And so you have, but you have to build that authoritative body of work. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I built an authoritative body of work in financial coaching back quite a few years ago, and it's been top ranked in Google ever since. So that's the secret there. Um, when I work with clients that are solopreneurs, we, we work on creating their position of influence. And that's precisely what you're describing is why do people need you and why, who do you want to influence first? And then how do you want to influence them and what do you want them to do about it? There's this whole figure in that dynamic out. And I'm sorry, you're, you're so, you've given us a whole lot of data. I'm just trying to go back and capture some of the significant uh, sound bites here and some of the, some of the steps in the process because you figured out a very good process and people can go to your website and, and learn some things about or buy some of your books. But in the front end, creating that position of influence, you called it, you're an expert at things and that's so key. So you created the body of information. Go back to that part again. How did you start creating this, this expert position? Well, for the terms financial coaching, money coach, all that, what I did is I did keyword research around those terms and I saw all the different searches people were using, like how do you become a, a money coach? What is a money coach? Um, how is a money coach different from financial advice? How's financial coaching different from financial advice and mm -hmm. all that? And so then what I did is I turned it into, because I'm very much about the consumer. I'm very much like I'm a consumer advocate. That's the whole reason I got in this business. Mm -hmm. I got tired of all the... Um, you know, where there's money, there's power, right? And so if you're in the money business, there's a lot of people that are very corrupt that are trying to exploit people. And so mm -hmm. like, if you read my book, I have a book out on Amazon that's pretty funny. It's called uh, Don't Hire a Financial Coach, dot, 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 until after you read this book. And that, would, that book was directly targeted at all the clients that were coming to me from what I'll call the back-end coaching programs off New York Times bestseller authors. Mm -hmm. um, what they were doing is they were getting a New York Times bestselling book and then that establishes them as an authority. And then there's these, and most people don't know this, but there's whole floors of coaches off in Utah in high-rise buildings with headsets on and cubicles. And they market these back-end coaching services to New York Times bestsellers. And so they create this quote-unquote curriculum right? But it's not real coaching. It's not how coaching is best applied. It's just very expensive content delivery and it's overpriced content delivery, but because it's labeled as coaching, people can uh, upsell it as a back end sell off their New York times bestselling book. And so I'm not going to name names, but you can probably guess the people in my business that did this. Mm -hmm. And, and so um, I wrote a book as a consumer protection device so that consumers could recognize you know, a genuine financial coach who's genuinely providing coaching in the way that it, that it works and adds value versus somebody who's using it as a renaming um, metaphor for content delivery done in a very expensive, very lazy way. 
Um, so that's an example of a consumer advocate book. Now the books are another thing though, the, but what the books do is they establish authority and they're another source of um, uh, what you call high relationship content. I'm sorry, high relationship conversions, right? Because after people read my books or listen to my podcast, they have an experience of me. And so there's trust involved. And so then when they come over to the site, they're a wholly different class of client than somebody who just did a Google search. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or so, I should say prospect, not client, a wholly different class of prospect. Because you, you have to go, you have to convert people from prospect to client, right? It's, there's, a, there's a consistent conversion process. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and a lot of people that I know and that I talk to and that I see um, some dialogue on social media um, have a lot of traffic. A lot of people come to their website, but they're not really converting. So as part of it, they haven't really established the value in the relationship with the client, or is there some other secret for conversion, which is... Well, let me put it this way. Do you, do you like, all right, Hugh, do you like to be converted? Hmm. No, of course no. not. None of us no. do, right? That's why, mm. that's why subscribe to my newsletter is a losing proposition. Nobody wants another newsletter. Nobody needs more information, right? Oh. As I said before, they need solutions. They need value. You, you have to figure out how you can deliver value as part of the conversion. So what is it that you can give that people will want enough to convert, i.e. get on, become a subscriber on your list? So it's always about giving. That's the beauty of content marketing. That's what makes it fun is it's a giving business. It, it makes mark. I don't like to pitch, but I'm more than happy to give and in the process have a smart business model behind it because then, then my profits become a measure of how many people I've helped as opposed to, you know, how much I extracted from people or something, you know, as long as you're always giving more value than you take, it's a fun business. It's hard work, but it's fun. Well, I do detect a bit of passion in your voice. You have excitement when you talk about what you do and a passion for it. And I think that's underlying. You really have to want to do what you're doing. Um, what did you say about this as a giving business? Would you go back to that one? You kind of slipped that one in there. Well, it's because think about it. Like, so if you go on my website, what do you get when you subscribe? You can get a free ebook. You get a free course. Um, there's, I give away a free course called 52 weeks to financial freedom and it goes through and I'm changing that up, by the way, but the courses that exist right now as we record this is 52 Weeks to Financial Freedom, and it maps out the entire financial freedom process step by step. So you can see all the steps. It gives you kind of the overview framework. So if that's your goal, which is my target client again, right? If that's your goal, then that's a high value proposition. And then the free book I give away is 18 Essential Lessons of a Self-Made Millionaire. And so that goes through and shares all kinds of valuable ideas I learned along the journey. Um, the other, I give away all kinds of stuff. I give away transcripts to uh, podcasts for, for opting in. I give away a free PDF of any article. I'm known for extremely long body content. I write articles that are almost as long as eBooks. Like I did a whole expose on whole life insurance and how it's sold incorrectly and how it should be sold correctly and who's it for and who gets ripped off by it. And I just gave really business common sense principles around whole life. 12,000 words. I mean, it's, it's almost an ebook length article, right? A lot of people don't want to read that much online. So I give away a free PDF of every article. There's no ads on it. It's all beautifully formatted. All you have to do is opt in. You can get a free PDF of any article on the site. Also on my calculators. I have one of the largest collections of financial calculators on the internet. I give them away for free. You can use them all you want. No opt-in required. However, if you would like a screen print of all your calculated results with all the tables and charts and everything cool with it, then when you opt in, I'll send it to you. So what I'm pointing out is there's giving at every step. I'll give you the article, and if you want the PDF, just opt in. I'll give it to you. I give you the calculator for free, and if you want the, the printed results sent to you in a nice format, opt in. I'll send it to you for free. Um, I'll give you the free book. I'll give you the free course. I give, give, give. Always a value, something that's relevant and valuable to where you are anywhere on my site at that point. The, mm -hmm. the, the giveaways are so consistent throughout the site that I actually tested what most marketers do, which is pop-up boxes and inter, what they're, they're called in the business interstitials, right? And in old advertising business, it was called interruption marketing, mm -hmm. right? Where you just, you just interrupt the person all over their screen until you irritate them so much they opt in or some crazy idea like that. I actually tried them one time. I did an experiment for a month and my opt-in rate dropped, and my time on my site dropped, all the quality standards of the site, 
like time on site, page views per visitor, all those numbers dropped and my opt-in dropped. So that stuff only works when your site doesn't have proper opt-in bonuses. If you have proper incentives for people to opt in, they will opt in. And if you chase them around with all these interstitials, you're just going to chase them away. So let people choose to opt in. That's your quality subscriber. Give them something worth subscribing for. Yeah, you can have a big list that's actually meaningless. The, um, the free ebook they get, would you give us that title again? 18 Essential Lessons of a Self-Made Millionaire. 18 Essential Lessons of a Self-Made Millionaire. That's worth going right there. Wow. Yeah. Time. It's free, right? It's a, it's a short read and it's packed with value. I like right, that. because what's if you if you delivered a junk ebook on the back end of it, then what did you accomplish? It's got to be good, right? Because if they come in, they trusted you enough to give give you their name, and then they come into your system and you deliver a piece of junk ebook that's you know two pages long and it doesn't say anything or it's a bullet point list. That didn't build trust or relationship. The whole point of this is to build trust and relationship for the high value conversion. This is what's called the shy yes. So in a dating analogy, it's the equivalent of saying, hey, do you want to go for a cup of coffee? That's what the opt-in is. It's like you're going out for a cup of coffee. Now, if you immediately say, hey, come home with me, let's have sex, you're gonna, it's not going to be a conversion, right? There has to be trust built. There has to be relationship built. The desire has to exist before the conversion takes place. Oh, such wise words. You know, we've had um, a lot of information in the last 30, 40 minutes here. And um, this will be transcribed and it'll, it'll be on the podcast. It'll be on my website and your links will be there. And I would encourage people. What's the name of your podcast, by the way? Financial Mentor. Very original, right? Everything's Financial Mentor. You know, on Facebook, it's Financial Mentor. On Twitter, it's Financial Mentor. It's Financial Mentor. I got, I got the branding across the board. And it explains itself. What's that? It explains itself. Yeah. Again, you know, I was lucky. I, I, I got it back in 98. I started in the business early enough that you could still get a decent URL and it matches the business, which is it's a financial education business. I'm mentoring people on how to build well. You know, you make it sound easy, but you've worked hard to make it sound easy. Very much so. Yeah. That's the mark of, you know, somebody understands it when they can explain it in a way that simplifies it and makes it actionable. Right. And so, and you only get that point by walking the talk. I mean, if you'd asked me 10 years ago, I would have fumbled this thing left and right. It's only because I've done it, you know, and once you really know at a deep level, it's really pretty simple stuff. It's not, it's not complex, mm -hmm. um, but it's a lot of work to do. I mean, to do well, it takes some effort. You, you don't just throw it up there. Well, and I find a lot of people make it harder than it already is. It's already hard. So when I, when I try to simplify it, I liked, um, well, let's clarify. I want to clarify something. It's not hard. It's a lot of work. Oh, Okay, so it's relatively simple to do. You just have to be committed enough to do the work to create all the value for people. If you're willing to do the work to create value because you care enough to give that value, it's not hard. It's just a lot of work. So if people are tired of, of their subsistence um, getting along with what they're making, they can go to financialmentor.com or listen to your podcast. It's on iTunes, I'm sure, Financial Mentor. And your Facebook page is Financial Mentor. And going to your website, there's a lot of free stuff. Um, Todd, you've given us a huge... I guess I wasn't lying, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do any good, does it? <laughs> yeah, and it's just the antithesis of all those people say, come to my, come to my webinar and I'm going to make a lot of money. Well, they give you a couple of tips and they tell you you should buy something to get the rest. What you're doing is giving people a large body of information and saying... If you like that, there's more. So you've really given people something of value. And that's so key today because there's so many people trying to trick us um, that, that you're giving people really solid information. So I'm really, we, um, we found each other on, um, on LinkedIn and I was looking for credible people to uh, do an interview from my podcast and, and vice versa to exchange with credible people grow my network and then um, help you grow your network. So I'm really glad that you and your team responded. You have a really high functioning team that responded on your behalf. That's a, you know, my area is, is leadership and organizational development and our work is very similar. And you, you uh, somewhere in here had a quote that was very similar to what Jim Rohn used to teach. It's not 
making your goal, let's say, the most important thing is what happens to you and your business in achieving the goal. And you've, I wanted to highlight that because that's yeah, I mean, you the key piece. Yeah, you think about it, you know, business is just one of the stages on which you play out your stuff in life, right? You have various stages you play out on. You have relationship, you know, money, business, uh, I don't know, spirituality. I mean, there's all these different stages on which you're playing out your stuff. And this is just one of them. But ultimately, you know, what is life, right? You know, I like to think life is becoming the best version of yourself, you know, trying a path of personal growth and that, you know, you're growing and moving into whatever you can become. And uh, it's a never ending journey. And that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it exciting. It is. It is. We've got some interesting people. We're, I like to record these live on Facebook and see who shows up. It's totally unannounced and we randomly picked up some interesting people. So as we do the wrap here, Todd, uh, this is incredibly important information and people will get to track it by looking at the transcript. What would you leave us with? What closing thought or challenge would you like to leave the listener with today? Just do the work. You know, quote Stephen Pressfield here, right? Do the work, overcome your resistance and, and move your life forward because guess what? This isn't a trial run, you know? You can look at Hugh and I here. We're older dudes now. You know, we've, we've been down the road that you're going to get to our spot really fast, surprisingly fast. And so it's not a trial run. Don't waste your days. Get out there and make it happen. Um, you know, just do it to quote Nike, right? It's, it's, it. um, why else would you live? What, what else is the point of your day? You know, um, don't, don't waste time. Get out and make it happen. Well, Todd Trester, you, you, you made my day, and it, this certainly was not a wasted time. It was very important. Thank you for giving such value to me and my listeners. Thank you, Hugh. Thanks for having me on the show.